Our, our guest today is in any event welcome, but I should record that in 20 years I have not before been hectored by so many letters, uh, or in this case urging me to invite Dr. Ron Paul for this hour. He is very welcome, uh, but this is all especially odd when you consider that Dr. Paul is a libertarian, and libertarians more or less specialize in non-organization. Though to run for president of the United States, which Dr. Paul is doing on the libertarian ticket, does require organization to be sure uncoerced. Uh, in 1980, the Libertarian Party, listed in every state of the Union, garnered one million votes. In 1984, the ticket won only 250,000 votes. But the Libertarians today are talking about three, four, five million votes, we'll see. Ron Paul is a practicing physician. Uh, an obstetrician from Houston, Texas, who was born in Pittsburgh, attended Gettysburg College and has his MD from Duke. In 1974, he decided to run for Congress. He was elected four times, but pulled out in disgust against the heavy spending policies of Congress and the Reagan administration. Dr. Paul wants to abolish the CIA, the FBI, the draft, welfare, foreign aid, all of which would certainly reduce the deficit. The questions arise about what else it might uh, reduce. Our examiner today is well known to our audience. Professor Ernest Vandenhag is Owen Professor of Public Policy and Law at Fordham University. More about Dr. Vandenhag in due course. I'd like to begin by asking Dr. Paul, how does he account for the great fall off in the vote for the Libertarian Party in 1984? The fall off in 84 is probably similar to the fall off of the Democrats. You know, the Democrats didn't do all that well in 84 either. I well, think they, it was they the, didn't do 25 percent what they did last time. <laughs> but I think it was the Reagan euphoria. You know, we were at the height of the, of the spending and the deficits, and everybody believed that uh, prosperity was here forever. And uh, matter of fact, I was invited to do this very same thing in 1984 and decided it would have been a would be bad year, so I didn't do it. Uh -huh. Precisely for the political reason that I thought that Ronald Reagan would be very, very popular. But uh, now the Reagan era, era is over, and uh, I think uh, he's much more exposed and the conservatism of the Reagan administration, I think, is much more exposed than it was in 1984. Well, I, I don't mean to suggest having myself run for office once that it's uh, embarrassing to get uh, a small percentage of the vote. But uh, yours, obviously, is a didactic enterprise, not a political enterprise, isn't it? No, it isn't. Not for me, because, um, you know, I thought so when I first ran for Congress, because uh, my wife warned me that it could be very dangerous. I could get elected. But I assured her that I would not, because I was running on these libertarian principles and mm -hmm. libertarian ideals. And lo and behold, I ended up being sentenced to Washington for eight <laughs> years. <laughs> so I think, you, I think you take a risk. Anytime you put your name down on that uh, ballot, you could be elected. That doesn't mean I'm predicting victory, but I do think and believe sincerely the libertarian movement has come of age. We've been around for 15 years, and I think we're going to have a real impact. That doesn't mean that uh, we're going to get 34% of the vote and be ushered into the White House, but uh, we will not go unnoticed in 1988. Well, if you don't go uh, uh, unnoticed and have an impact, then it's got to be didactic in nature, not political in nature, isn't it? Well, uh, not in the sense that um, the, the program and the organization and the procedure and the money raising is designed for one thing, and that is to win. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean we have illusions, but the purpose of the campaign uh, is not didactic. That comes from the Mises Institute and the Free Foundation, the other educational uh, activities that we have as libertarians. But a campaign is organized for one purpose, and that's to win. And uh, we have 70 office holders now in the country. We've had three state representatives. So uh, the, the design of the uh, campaign is to win, to get as many votes as possible, but not to be naive. Uh, well, I excuse me for contradicting you, but um, I ran for office having no intention uh, of winning, but having uh, very much the, uh, the uh, intention of, uh, of uh, co-opting the press to pay attention to my points of view since there was no dissimilarity between the points of view of the Republican running and the Democrat uh, running. But I, I don't consider that, um, uh, I don't consider that I demeaned the enterprise by knowing perfectly well that I wasn't going to win. But I think you have a feeling that uh, some superstition or other blinds you from telling what you know about this. It's, you're not going to win, but you're going to, you're well, going to occupy uh, the attention of Yeah, well, I think there's a big difference. Uh, I think uh, your running uh, was not a, a significant new party movement. It was not, uh, it was closer to probably 
John Anderson saying, here I am as an individual. We have a political party that's been in existence for 15 years, and uh, what we do in 1988, if there's a large amount of building, this means that 1992 might be quite a different story. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, the purpose is not just didactic, even though it does not have to be that we have to claim victory. Uh, 1856 uh, uh, did not uh, guarantee that Republicans would be a major political force in this country, and yet by 1860 it was. Mm -hmm. Well, th let me say that uh, my, own, my own feeling is that um, to the extent that a society lends itself uh, to a third party uh, for the purpose of um, illuminating the platforms of other parties, uh, running with a didactic end in mind is by no means a bad idea. Unhappily, most of the programs that were that were advocated by Norman Thomas in 1930, when he got such a high 32, when he got such a high vote, were adopted by the Democratic Party in the course of the next eight or 12 years. And by the Republican Party, it and the Republicans as well. Yeah. Yes, that's so, so that, one uh, point. <laughs> so that uh, I, I, uh, I don't, by all means, uh, discount the importance of uh, of advertising libertarian alternatives. But as somebody who occasionally calls himself a libertarian, uh, I, uh, uh, I I regret the extent to which the libertarian position is discredited by positions, uh, by a, a kind of reductionism that uh, is simply incompatible with social life. You want to destroy the FBI, for instance, why? Well, we could point out first that the uh, first 125 years of this country existed without an FBI. You know, that came about, I believe, during the First World War. The CIA is a, really a recent phenomenon, 1947. Well, we existed 125 years without an airplane, too. I mean, so. Well, but uh, I don't think the analogy is correct, but uh, there's, there's no reason why we have to have a private uh, central intelligence agency going around uh, participating in overthrow of governments. Well, uh, that's not part of the American tradition. What do you mean pri private intelligence agency? Well, the, the secret uh, uh, civilian, civilian rather than private civilian agency uh, being involved, such as uh, uh, Kennedy used in the 1960s in escalating the war in Vietnam. Uh, this, but, but I think well, the important point is not to imply that when we want to get rid of the CIA that we would get rid of all intelligence. There's a purpose for intelligence the same way we achieved this uh, prior to 1947. There is a reason for military intelligence and, and I don't find anything wrong with that. But I do find something wrong with uh, the CIA uh, being involved in uh, maybe trading weapons to the Ayatollah and secretly sending funds to Central America or mining uh, international harbors. Well, this sort well, that, of thing that, is that not would be a proper a, that, function. That would be a criticism of a policy undertaken by the CIA, which is to be distinguished, isn't it, from a position as to whether or not the CIA ought to uh, exist. But we start on the FBI. Let's, let's uh, finish on that. Uh, uh, I don't think it's the libertarian position that there ought to be no federal laws at all, is there? Is it? Well, there aren't too, going to be too many federal laws. Uh, matter of fact, that's the way the Constitution was written. You know, laws against murder and theft are usually handled by the state, yeah. so we don't particularly want to change that. Uh, there aren't going to be many, there shouldn't be many federal laws, and there aren't, uh, uh, there wouldn't be under a libertarian society either. Well, so uh, most uh, law uh, enforcement would be handled by the state. Let's be concrete. Um, suppose somebody were to kidnap you here, uh, and 24 hours go by, uh, it, it is, uh, and it was up until 1936, exclusively a state responsibility. But given the methods of um, transportation, which are different now from what they were at the time of the Constitutional Convention, the possibility is very great that you are not any longer here, but maybe in Pennsylvania or maybe in California. Are you saying that it ought not to be, there ought not to be a federal regard for your liberty uh, as somebody who has been kidnapped? Well, there would be in the sense of guaranteeing liberty through the constitutional principles, but well, they may go to Canada as well, and we don't, uh, our, our FBI doesn't uh, have license to go into Canada, no, but we well, have an agreement, so states could have agreements through their justice departments and their investigation departments in order to coordinate. Well, what kind of chances would you have um, if one uh, were to rely on coordinating within among 50 states to try to decide what well, happened probably to you. probably just as good as chances we have now because I think the FBI is not uh, 
a perfect institution, and they've also been known to violate civil liberties. They they run uh, they run sting well, operations, and of course they spy on citizens. Yeah, I, I think of what the FBI did with Martin Luther King, which was strictly an unconstitutional act to. Uh, uh, to develop uh, all this information on a lot of private citizens where there's no threat. Well, yeah, in the first place, everybody violates uh, constitutional uh, acts. Uh, we're asking a question whether there is inherent in the mandate of a federal concern responsible for interstate crimes a greater tendency to violate the Constitution than for others. You may or may not know that uh, the FBI is bound by rules that tend to be far stricter than those that bind individual states. But they have been done a real good job, Senator J. Edgar Hoover, to follow all those rules because it was used as a political weapon, and we all know that. I mean, J. Edgar Hoover used to hold the evidence, and he could intimidate a politician quite frequently. So I don't think the evidence is very clear that J. Edgar Hoover uh, was a strict constitutionalist and a civil but libertarian. But I'm, I'm not making that point. <laughs> I'm, I'm making the point that if you get kidnapped here today, there ought to be some concern to find you even if you have crossed the border. The only way to do that is through a federal uh, agency. Now, it seems to me that the libertarians tend to uh, discredit their position by despising anything that has the word federal in it, even though there was a felt need for such an organization. We move on to the CIA. Now, <clears throat> we didn't have the Soviet Union or, or hydrogen bombs uh, either for 175 years, but uh, the intelligence function now could be a matter of life and death of the entire republic, isn't it? And, and, and therefore, why would you want to eliminate uh, an organization whose mandate it is to pick up as much intelligence as we possibly can respecting the... But see, I, I think you missed my point earlier. The fact mm. that we don't want a central intelligence agency doesn't mean that we would not have intelligence. It's just that we would handle it differently. We would have it as a military function, not a civilian function which is the way uh, it has been accomplished before. I mean, how do, what did our people do prior to 1914, prior to the FBI, when there were uh, people who were uh, being kidnapped and taken across the border? There were all kinds of inter uh, interstate conflicts, but we, we existed. Uh, I don't see where anybody's written any great uh, books about how, how terrible it was before we had the FBI. You can find a lot more books about the FBI and how they have violated civil liberties rather than the uh, despicable situation that might have existed prior to the FBI. Well, I'm, I'm not actually sure that's, that's correct because uh, it, it, it's, it's the last five or six years of Mr. Hoover's tenure that seemed to contaminate his reputation. But uh, during the 30s, 40s, and 50s, he was a kind of mythical hero. And you, you may or may not remember that during the late 50s, uh, late, late uh, 30s, he was constantly hectoring the Justice Department uh, and the White House for violating uh, rules in the course of Mr. Roosevelt's uh, persecution of his pro-war policies. So, uh, so uh, I, I don't think we should just hit and run uh, J. Edgar Hoover quite that, uh, that bluntly. Still, uh, uh, the, the CIA is an organized uh, institution that um, seeks to give us information vital to the survival of the Republic in certain circumstances, or to the detection of terrorists, uh, that kind of thing. Now, why, but, but do you, that, why do you care that that should be done by the military rather than CIA? Because the uh, major function of the CIA now is covert activity and interference in no, internal no, affairs no, of no, other nations, <laughs> and serving our business and banking interests around the world. That, that's what they're doing now, rather than, and some, most of the time, their information is bad. I mean, they have failed so often. If they were so good, why didn't they get our Marines out of, the, uh, out of Beirut in time? Well, I mean, I, our CIA really hasn't functioned that uh, well. This is not an argument of how good they are. It's an argument of whether or not it is a, uh, an enterprise that is related to the uh, survival of, of a country uh, uh, in the 20th century. And uh, if, if, by the way, if 95% of their activity is not covert, it has to do with simply intelligence gathering. As somebody said, it, it costs uh, us about $600 million a year to get information about the Soviet Union, which they can get in the local newsstand in Times Square. But, uh, but I, I don't understand why you have this metaphysical opposition to something that is clearly designed to uh, safeguard the frontiers of the Republic. Because there, there's no need for it, and they've caused more harm uh, than good. They literally were participants in a escalation of the war in Vietnam. The killing of Diem was orchestrated and uh, very much involved with our own CIA. Our CIA uh, does not have a good record. And